this is a way that I really recommend practicing all scales. We're going to look at three different scales today. Blues, minor, and major, because to me that's the main ones. The idea here is that we are bringing in chords and scales together to merge that gap between cool rhythm playing and cool lead playing. What do we got going on here? We got a G7. There's a G bar chord. Take your pinky off. You got G7. You got a C9. If you don't know this chord, it is three, starting on my A string. Three, two, three, three. And I put a little chromatic thing between them. A little cool. That's just a funky thing to do. And then what we're trying to do here is tell our brain, hey, if this is the vibe, then this is the scale. So I'm doing one octave of a scale and then going right back to a groove. This is like, I do this with all my students, uh, with all of our scales. So then there's our G7, C9, and walk up a G blue scale. Three, six, three, four, five, three, five. And then you go up, you go you groove again. And then I'm gonna go second octave of the scale. Five, three, five, six, five, Sorry, three, six, three. Yep. Let's look at that again. One octave, then the other octave. Neat. Now, let's do both octaves going the other way. That's all I did. Upper octave coming down. There it was, just backwards. And then lower octave coming down. And this is so great for developing, uh, being able to put tasty little fills, and uh, yes, this is a blues scale right now, but this is true for your cool modes. You could play a little modal riff, and then a half of a scale. Modal riff, half of a scale. It's just a good way to like really hear the scale, because I know what it looks like to learn scales. There's a lot of grids, there's a lot of dots, but Without context, a scale is just grids and dots. So this way you're giving yourself the context. Yes, you could make a little loop uh, with a looper pedal or a backing track, but I think it's actually better practice to make yourself be your own rhythm guitar player and your own lead guitar player. Let's do the same thing with minor. Let's go up to A minor, for example. We have a chord progression, we have a scale. Let's look at our groove first. We just got A minor and G, and I'm putting a vaguely surf rock kind of thing to it, like a. So if that's my groove, which yeah, that's the fun thing also, is you kind of, I keep a running list, I call it a groove matrix of some of my favorite feels that I like to put stuff on, and yeah, surf is one of them, that boom, cha cha, boom, cha, is cool. But now we need to think about where is our minor scale? So A minor is five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, five, seven. There's our first octave, our second octave. Seven, four, five, seven. And yes, I double use my pointer or index finger. Five. There's the pieces of our scale, and yeah, it's always good to run a scale. That doesn't really develop our skills as a rhythm slash rhythm lead guitar player. Now, to fit this in though, boom, cha cha, boom, cha cha. I wanted to keep the groove going, so that means I had to break my little scale segments even smaller. So I broke the first octave into halves. Up the first four, up the next four. 
I think you see what I did there. Hit it again. And yeah, from seven, eight, five, seven. And I'm gonna keep going up. Next octave. Seven, four, five, seven. Come from seven, five, six, eight, or I could start on five, six, eight. It's probably what I do. And now I'm gonna do all that going down. tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website www.erichaugenguitar.com what else do i need to tell you about my business model i'm on patreon and instagram as well let's put the links on the screen and what else oh thank you for watching and to everybody who supports me and likes what i do thanks let's do one more scale let's do major let's do g major because yeah to me all scales are derivatives of either blues, major, or minor. All your funky modes, all that, all the neat kind of uh, Jerry Garcia things and uh, whoever else, uh, they're all subsets of those three main areas. Let's look at G major. We're gonna do a G, B minor, A minor seven, D seven. If we don't know those forms, G, that's standard. E minor standard. A minor 7, well that's just an A minor bar chord, pinky off. D7, which we're not going to actually use because we're going to be doing a, a, the scale is going to fit over the D7, but it's just a C. Add the pinky to the third fret, that makes a C7. Move it on up, gives you a D7. So our groove, similar to a surf groove, this is a little bit more of a 50s. Very classic kind of 50s progression. Now I'm going to replace that last chord with a G major scale. Let's look at where G major is. So that's down here on my third fret. Three, five, two, three, five, two, four, five. There's our first octave. And then our second octave. Of course, yes, you could. You would want to do that. But again, I'm trying to build what I call double vision. I have glasses, hence four eyes. And so I can see the scale and the chord at the same time. And that is immensely helpful for playing to changes, for doing fills, for doing leads, for everything, to see the layers. Oh, if I'm on a chord, I can see the scale behind it. If I'm on a scale, I kind of see what chord it really goes with. And that's like, you know, the super duper awesome jazz players can do that in their jazz way, but us rock players can do it too. So our, our scale runs are actually, I'm gonna start them on A because we're coming off of a D. So uh, watch what I do. Observe. E minor. So that run, I started on the second note of the scale. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to always aim to start on the A tone. There's our first octave, and so that means when it comes around again, I'm going to aim for that A and run up there. Let's see what happens. Neat. And now, if I did this A and that A going up, now I'm gonna aim for this A up top here and come down. Let's look at that again. So I came around, E minor. Yep, there's our scale. And then go around again, and this time I'm gonna aim for this A here and come down the scale. Here 
go. Let's go up again. Go up again. And what was I going to say about this? Yeah, I guess to, in conclusion, yeah, it's all about seeing how chords and scales work together. And uh, this is a great way to, to do this now in real life. That's a little complicated to put so many notes in. In real life, I'd probably play a lot less notes. Let me show you, like, just much simpler fill there. Just a couple of notes. Because that's easier to get to. But for practice, it's fun to do the la notes. Let's do another simple one. Thanks for watching.